I thought my boobs were going to explode. Like, this is the funniest thing ever. Two years later, and we're still doing it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited about today's video because it's on one of my favorite topics breastfeeding. If you've been following me for a while, I've done a lot of videos on this topic because we are at over, two, I say we, I'm at over two years of breastfeeding my now two-year-old daughter. I never thought in a million years that I would be breastfeeding a two-year-old. Like, I just didn't think that was me. I always like respected moms that were able to do that. I just like never, I, I just be like, no, that just seems like a little uncomfortable. That was never the plan. I just thought we'll just keep going until it feels right. And here we are two years later and we're still doing it. But in today's video, I'm sharing my breastfeeding hacks. And these are the things that I did not know before breastfeeding. I wish I knew them beforehand. It would have helped me a lot navigating the journey, but I'm gonna tell you guys and share all my tips and tricks that I think everyone needs to know when it comes to breastfeeding. If you're new here, click that subscribe button down below. I post here every single week and I'm also gonna have a playlist down below with all my breastfeeding content and blog posts because there's a lot. Hack number one, dry cracked nips. Yeah, we're just getting right into it. Something I didn't know is that you can actually use dried breast milk. Like after you're done breastfeeding, you can hand express some breast milk kind of rub it around your nipple and any sore areas and let it fully air dry before putting your bra or your top back on. You want it to be fully air dry so you don't have any moisture because moisture can mean bacteria and you just, number one tip actually is keep the nips dry always. The dried breast milk is such a great natural healing method. It's free, you can do it anytime, all day long if you need to. I still do this. Maybe my daughter just got over a cold and she wanted extra milk and I'm feeling a little bit sore because my body's just not used to the extra feeds now. I will do the milk trick and honestly, it works like a dream. I've talked about this before, dream feeds. If you do not know what it is, let me give you a quick explanation. Say you're putting your baby down at seven o'clock at night for bedtime and you know that they're gonna wake up at 11 o'clock. Like this time could be different for everyone. You go in there, you sneak in there like a little mommy ninja, and you go in there and you pick them up and you sneak them on the boob, and this is called a dream feed. They are still sleeping peacefully, and you can top them up and put them right back to sleep. And it's crazy, they do not wake up. You have to do it at the right time. Like it has to be, if you know they wake up at 11, like don't go in at the time they're gonna wake up. Go maybe at 10 or 10.30, might be pushing it. Top them up and then it's insane. They might sleep an extra couple of hours. So that way when you go to bed, you can actually have a little bit more of a stretch before they wake up. I did this about every single night when Sage was younger. Everybody wants to know how to get the good latch, which is key if you do not want super sore nipples. A fun fact, they should actually have some boob in their mouth too and not just the tip. If they just got the tip, like it's gonna be so sore and you're not gonna make it through. So a little hack that I learned is to actually latch some. So I'd like flatten my boob a bit. This feels weird to do this now. I like flatten my boob a bit and latch from the bottom lip and then up instead of just like trying to pop them in or like shove your boob in their mouth. The bottom to up, key. This helped so much and you basically just wanna get as much boob in the mouth as you can and then you'll work on the latch together. Um, but this is just gonna really help prevent sore nips and just have a better section for baby. But obviously speak to a lactation consultant. I am not an expert, this is just what I did. We're gonna call this the hair elastic method. So when you are done feeding baby on one side, you're actually going to start your next feed on the same side you left off on. Now, a lot of times we can forget what side that was. Like sometimes you can feel and tell. Like I remember all the time I'd be like, mm, yeah, this side's full. Like you can feel it a little bit, but sometimes it's hard. So a trick is just using a hair elastic. You can either put it on the one that you finished on or the one that you're gonna start on the next time, like whatever's easiest for you to remember. You can track it on your phone, but this is just so much easier. And there are some bras that like will have a little thing that slides in the middle to help like you know which side to, to nurse on next. Um, but really important just to be completely draining 
each side evenly. There are many positions that you can breastfeed your baby and honestly, I didn't even know about them before I started. I thought it was just the typical cradle one. There's the football one where their head is here and they're actually laying this way, which is very comfortable. It looks like it wouldn't be, but it does feel nice. It's And it's nice to have more than one option because like this traditional way can feel a little bit uncomfortable sometimes on the neck and shoulders and just switching it up, just like when we're working at our desk, standing up, walking around can help alleviate like pain and aches. So my favorite way and I think this is like the best way to do it and it's the way we do it every morning is side lying breastfeeding this is like the best way to do it you don't have to worry about like the strain on your neck back and shoulders you are lying down so your body's relaxed and you're able just to like pop the boob in their mouth and they're lying down everyone's really relaxed this is like the best morning breastfeeding position in my opinion and I remember when I think it was my doula or my midwife I can't remember, taught me this and I was like, Pew. I learned it on day two of breastfeeding and it like saved my back, so try it. <laughs> supply, this is another big issue when it comes to breastfeeding, you're always worrying about your supply. I remember I would sometimes be so stressed out if I fe felt like it dipped a bit and I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, what do I do? So power pumping is something that you can do with a breast pump to help stimulate and increase your milk supply. So essentially I need to, it's been a while since I haven't actually breast pumped in a long time, but like definitely under a year old, I was still breast pumping and using this method. Hi, Cashew. <laughs> That's a hair last. <laughs> Everybody wants to see more Cashew, here you go. I know, the neediest child I have is the older one. If she sits on me, <laughs> she wants her moment. That's okay. Daddy's gonna give you a cookie. Yeah, I know. Daddy's gonna give you a cookie. <laughs> so I actually found the graphic that I looked up when I first started to do this. I'll put it on the screen. So you're gonna pump for 20 minutes, rest for 10, pump for 10, rest for 10, and then pump for 10. I think it's in total, do the math, 50 minutes. That's an hour long, oh wow. Okay, so it does take a little bit of time, but if you are really concerned about your milk supply, this is like a nice, quick way to do it and just have a little bit more control over it. So you're essentially tricking your body because it works on supply and demand. And by doing this power pumping method, you are telling your body baby is cluster feeding and we need to make more milk. Um, so this is something, this was like a go-to of mine. Anytime I was panicking, I would do the power pumping and it helped so much. And I'd usually do it at night or early in the morning um, after I would already feed my daughter. So I wasn't interrupting her milk supply. Also, don't be alarmed if you're not getting a lot of milk when you do this or when you're pumping in general, it is not a real um, picture of your milk supply. And the important thing is that you are stimulating and sending those signals to create more milk. So a lot of times I would just do this for that stimulation, not so much for like milk storage. Speaking of milk supply, I am bringing back my limited edition mommy milk smoothie. This was a bonus recipe that you would get when you purchase the Baby Health Nut Cookbook, which is a digital ebook filled with all of the recipes that I started feeding my daughter Sage since she was six months old, and we are still cooking out of it to this day. I'm actually working on part two. This smoothie is creamy, dreamy, it's delicious, and it has milk boosting ingredients that are great for helping to boost your milk supply. All you have to do to claim this free mommy milk smoothie recipe is when you purchase a copy of the Baby Health Nut Cookbook, click the link down below to claim the smoothie by entering your order number, and then it will get emailed directly to your inbox. Um, this is going to be on for a limited time. I'll have the date that we're going to be running it till here. So many moms have sent me amazing reviews about the smoothie and how much they love it. It tastes so good. It's like a milkshake that also is great for milk supply. Breastfeeding while baby wearing. This is something I just accidentally discovered one time and then I realized it's a thing. Um, so if you've seen them before, there's lots of different wraps and stuff and ways to wear your baby. So there's the more structured baby wraps like the Baby Bjorn one, which we had, but I found the best one to do this with was with a softer fabric one. My favorite was Solly Baby. They have so many beautiful designs, but the fabric is so buttery soft. It's stretchy, but supportive. And it doesn't, it looks complicated to like wrap it up, but like they have really good tutorial videos. Even Matt would baby wear Sage with this. It was really cute. And I just felt this one was really comfortable because you could easily position baby's head in whatever way you want and latch them on and then just have them supported. And you can just have the wrap hold them 
while breastfeeding. And this just lets your arms be free and you can still like do things. I remember I do things around the house or you just relax on the couch and watch something on Netflix. Like it is such a fun little trick that I feel like I didn't discover early enough, but hopefully it helps you. Hydration is so, so important when you're breastfeeding. And if you are not a water drinker, every time you sit down to breastfeed, make sure you have a large water bottle, preferably with a straw. I find it's just a little bit easier to like reach over. You don't have to worry about spilling anything on baby. You don't have to worry about twisting something off and it just makes it really simple and convenient. And then if you just make this a habit, every time you go down to breastfeed, you always have that water bottle with you. You can have multiple water bottles throughout the house, one by the bed, one by the couch, one in the kitchen, wherever the spots are that you go to breastfeed. That way you always replenish that water while you're breastfeeding because as you know, milk has a lot of water in it. So while you're breastfeeding, you are actually you know, releasing a lot of liquid. So you wanna make sure you are replenishing that not only for you, but also to make more milk. So important, hydrate. This one is something I did basically my first week when I started breastfeeding. When your milk first comes in, it catches you by surprise. The engorgement that happens, you basically, I can describe this like my breasts look like Frankenstein breasts. Like they were just so big, so hard, very veiny, uncomfortable. And yes, like breastfeeding helps relieve it, um, but sometimes there's just too much pressure. And I actually got this tip from a midwife and it was to put cabbage leaves on. So this actually will bring down your supply. So if you are, don't use this, like if you're just having sore boobs or something, it's not for that. It's literally, if you are too engorged to bring this down, I assume that you could probably use this too if you are weaning off of breastfeeding, um, but I'm not sure, like check with your doctor. I'm just like thinking about that now, um, but this definitely helped. They're cooling, but they also help reduce that discomfort. Like I thought my boobs were going to explode and I'm so glad I knew about this. Okay, future editing Nicole here. I forgot to mention one of my favorite hacks, which is refrigerating used breast pump parts. And what I mean by that is if you are pumping more than once during a 24 hour period, you can actually place those used parts in a sealed bag or container in the fridge for up to 24 hours and they will still be safe to reuse, to pump and store your milk again. Once I learned about this hack, anytime I was pumping more than once during a 24 hour period, I would just place everything in the fridge and then have it ready to reuse again. Otherwise you are washing, drying, sanitizing, all the things so many times in a day and it's so time consuming or you need two different pumps and it's just can get expensive. Try this hack and honestly, it's amazing and everyone needs to know about it. Okay, let's talk about clogs. This is a, another big issue when it comes to breastfeeding. It is so scary to think about things like mastitis. I was so nervous about getting it anytime I would feel like I had a clog or something. You normally can tell because it's like hard on one side. One thing to note when it comes to your nipple is that it's not like there's one hole that the milk comes out. It's more like a sprinkler because there's all these different glands and they're kind of coming out through their own little Tubes. I just always used to think that there was one main hole, but if you are breastfeeding, you know that if you were to hand express, you'll see multiple little holes of milk leaking out. So I'll try to find an image here to help visualize it in your head, but all those different glands can clog up. So if you do have a clog, you'll usually feel like either pressure or pain or it'll be hard in one spot. And that is what you really wanna massage out. So I'm gonna share a couple things that I would do. Every day I would do some form of massaging of my breasts just to help things flow and not get clogged. But a couple other things you can do that I did is actually take some castor oil, which is all natural, and you can just put it on a cotton round, rub it around. You can even let it sit there for a few minutes underneath your bra to do its thing. And I felt like this worked wonders. Also hot showers, um, but definitely the oil and massaging. If you're really feeling stuck, pun intended, you can also do something called dangle feeding. I didn't even know what this was, but essentially you are like having baby on the ground or in a bed and you are over top of them dangling your breast and having them nurse that way. And something about like the pressure, the gravity, I don't know, science can help unclog those clogs and also just extra breastfeeding. Now we're getting really into it because one thing I did not know is that there is something called like a breast vibrator or massager. I had a friend um, online tell me about this when I was experiencing a clog and I just have this as backup in case like this is the funniest thing ever like what does this look like 
Um, it specifically has different vibrations to help unclog that clog. Because if you have a clog, it is serious stuff and you do not want to mess with it. You want to be mindful if you're feeling like feverish or anything, because that could be a sign of mastitis. Um, but essentially, this is shaped in a way that you can really get in there with those glands and clogs to help vibrate it out. So I keep this for emergencies, but definitely great to have multiple methods that you can go to when you feel like a clog is coming on or is already here. Another Another concern I get asked all the time is about breastfeeding in public because you know maybe you don't want your boob hanging out maybe you don't care maybe you think you're not allowed to breastfeed there if you are allowed to be there you are allowed to breastfeed there I just want to make that very clear let me tell you about the two shirt method so even if you feel comfortable breastfeeding in public this is just a really more comfortable way that I feel like you don't feel as exposed um, and you don't have to have like this heavy cover over top of you that can be really hot and uncomfortable for baby Like my daughter never liked having something over her head um, So what you can do is just wear a nice stretchy cotton tank top There are so many breastfeeding friendly ones that actually have a clip that you can just pull down or a lot of them are just stretchy That you can pull them down anyways And then you have another shirt over top preferably something that is a little bit loose and comfortable and stretchy. That way when you go to breastfeed, you can easily pull down the tank top, but you also have that shirt over top to cover up here, but then you have the bottom of the shirt to cover here. And it's kind of like this shirt sandwich situation and baby has access to the boob, but something isn't covering their face. And then if you want to use that loose shirt, you could put it over top of them and just peek this way, but you don't have to, and you just don't feel as exposed, especially when they're in the infant stage, like six to 12 months, they're so active, looking around everywhere, always popping off the boob, and then you're like really exposed. So this way it just feels a little bit more concealed. All right, there you have it. Those are my breastfeeding hacks and tips that I want to share with you that I had no idea about before I started breastfeeding. If you are a breastfeeding mama or a soon to be mama and you're looking to breastfeed, I hope these tips help you out. I'm gonna have all my other breastfeeding content down below in the info box. Definitely check that out. Also a reminder, if you wanna get that free bonus mommy milk smoothie recipe, it is on for a limited time only up until this date. All the information is gonna be down below with a copy of the Baby Health Nut Cookbook. You are gonna get this free recipe straight to your inbox, only available for a limited time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.